Parents and children From the beginning of time in every age and in every culture the two basic components of every home were parents and children The number of children has varied of course the two child family is the norm today and it is getting even smaller Besides parents also die divorce or disappear and thus change their relationship with their children earlier stability was important for most societies and our parents upheld this value by systems of command and control they determined and controlled their children's lives whom they married what work they did where they lived the joint family symbolizes this well All authority belonged to the father and the others just did what they were told. But today the great value is not stability it is change. And change implies freedom. Children wish to choose for themselves where they work, what they study, whom they love and partner with, where they stay. older people do to often divorcing their spouses and beginning second careers after retirement so in place of commands and obedience then the newer mantra is dialogue and respect dialogue means talking and listening whether between the spouses or between parents and older children respect implies that we treat everyone with dignity the very young the very old the disabled and the different helpers in the home let's dwell a while on four challenges which face families today be these families traditional or modern in some way or other they cause much of the tension which exists in our homes technology especially media technology has changed family life completely almost every home today has a tv set a music system and laptop computers all our information and entertainment comes through these media in addition the smartphone is our most important accessory linking us to friends business and the whole wide world out there duniya muthi mein how has technology changed families it has made families more confident and self-reliant but it has also isolated members and depersonalized them the second challenge is money and its use In earlier societies few people had access to money to use as they wished. Needs were usually met within the family. No longer. Young people today have money to spend on clothes, travel, dining out. Money is their key to freedom, to do as one wishes, and it unlocks the door to vices like drugs, drink, gambling and sexual excess The biggest challenge for most families however is sexual growth young people becoming adult sexual persons In almost all traditional families sexual information was tightly controlled because sex was only a function of childbearing so young people were taught the basic facts of life minimal information and then told to manage just as we your parents did besides sex in itself was seen as a powerful and uncontrollable force of nature destructive of good family order unless it was tightly repressed 
This is still the attitude of most Eastern societies, which inflict sanctions upon all those who challenge these norms, especially the young and women. But year two, technology changes everything. Reliable contraception has removed the fear of pregnancy from young women and allowed them to experiment with their own sexuality before settling down in marriage. The easy availability of pornography has provided information where parents and elders didn't. Habitual exposure to porn is addictive, but it is also true that it educates especially in repressive and authoritarian societies. The education of women of all classes has freed many of them from marriages of servitude where they were beaten by drunken husbands and burned to death by avaricious in-laws. It still remains true, however, that most parents feel uncomfortable handling the sexual inquiries of their children because they are nervous about their own sexual relationships as spouses. In traditional families, a regular time would always be set apart for prayer, family prayer, which was set to a pattern and in which all participated. Modern families find little time for this because there is a little shared time each one doing his or her own private thing. This is a pity. Precisely because parents and children often share a common turbulence, a time and space for prayer is needed. The prayer of thanksgiving, of petition and intercession, and most of all, the prayer for guidance. It's our belief that the best place for such prayer is at the dining table where parents and children gather every evening to share a common meal and to exchange conversation on the day which has passed. Surely we need to create a space for something so valuable? To end with a question, something which has surely teased many of you as you ponder over your own families and those of your friends. How is it that good parents so very often have bad children? It's a question to make us reflect on the influences which most shape the young, within the family or without. Today, parents are no longer the sole influence on the growing child not even the most important one. This may have been so formerly in a stable and static society. It is less and less so in times of change. For the growing boy or girl, what's of greater importance is the peer group. Friends and acquaintances who provide role models for what one wants to be. Their values, their choices, frequently run contrary to what was learnt at home. The media are even more important. They link us to the world around. They bring the world into our bedrooms. The attractive messages they shower us with question the values we learnt at home. Parents, peer group, media. Understanding the young means beginning a dialogue with each of these three. The age of command and control is definitely over. <laughs>